Hi, uh, Clive Lipschitz. Um, as you've studied this topic over the years, <clears throat> how much do you think of this is driven by values and almost altruism? I think the comment earlier by the previous speaker about millennials, 86% of them interested in this topic, is not necessarily driven by investment considerations. Um, that's on the one hand, versus on the other hand, in fact, the investment considerations and the impact on fiduciaries. Because as soon as you introduce an artificial constraint, you're by definition, at least in the short and medium term, introducing a constraint on returns. So how do you, how have this, has this been trending more altruism versus um, returns and how do you balance the fiduciary considerations? Oh, I love this question. Um, thank you. Um, so I think it's a false dichotomy, number one. I said that there are different foci along the spectrum from the people who look at intermediation, which is sort of the exclusionary, I don't, you know, I don't want to own thing. But there are certainly, as I pointed out, lots of studies that say that material ESG factors have information about returns embedded in them. And the systems work that we're doing suggests, in my mind, that's the way that you square that circle. Because if you build a better beta, it's a hard um, issue to prove because you have a double variable equation. Relative returns are irrelevant to your ultimate investors. And that's a whole other issue we can get into. But um, if you build a better beta and everyone benefits, that's much more powerful if you go back to, you know, Brinson Hood by what, factor of 11, 12, to whatever alpha you could possibly get. And so my answer to you would be if you accept that there are feedback loops between investing and the real economy, and if you accept that the real economy creates the situations that create beta, then your job as an asset manager leaving aside whether or not it's good for your firm or not, but your job for your clients is to give the best risk-adjusted return possible. That's not alpha risk-adjusted. That's risk-adjusted. That includes both alpha and beta. And therefore, I would argue, you violate your fiduciary obligation if you really believe that beta is more powerful than alpha by saying, I'm going to throw up my hands. Modern portfolio theory says I could diversify alpha, but I can't diversify beta and not trying to make create a better beta. So I will go out on the limb and say that in 10 years, it will be everyone's fiduciary obligation to at least discuss how they think about systemic risk and that some of those things that are values as opposed to value will be considered in that context. Now, I am not oblivious to the potential misuse of that, right? It, one person's systemic risk is another person's political grudge match. Um, and I think there are ways to deal with that. First, you have to be able to legitimately say this is a systemic risk and have some sort of intuitive logic. So if I say, gee, I don't like companies that make black chairs. They should only make orange chairs, and I'm going to vote against every, I mean, it's just not. I picked the reductive and absurd, but we could pick whatever one you want. If you don't believe climate change is a systemic risk, you don't believe climate change is a systemic risk. Um, second, I think that there needs to be, at some point, there's some level of consensus around this um, where the industry sees things as risk. It may not be a majority of the industry, but the items that we've talked about here tend to be there. And the third thing is they morph. Right now, if you ask me, I happen to be, just I'll declare my interest, I don't normally talk about politics, but I am a proud member of the Brady Center, have been a gun control advocate for 30 years. I don't think guns are a systemic risk to the financial system right now. Now, they may get there over time as regulations change and as people pay attention to it and start taking out whatever their feelings are on the system. And people, and clearly just, I mean, I don't think anyone would have said four months ago that we would see the sort of financial focus on guns that we have. So things can also morph over time.